had uh, Jacob out there at the end uh, in overtime and played a lot of minutes. Was that uh, more a faith in his defense or both sides of the ice? Well, we're talking about Mavari right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, I... He's uh, going back into last year. I, I just I feel he's one of our most dependable players, and uh, you know he facilitates offense. I thought that he earned the opportunity. Uh, he's got a lot of credit in the bank, and I thought he earned the opportunity to start off our, our uh, three on three. And so you know maybe we'll even work with him a little bit on some of his reads and that. But uh, you know I can't say enough about how sure-handed he is. The puck usually just stays in front of him and. He'll, he'll break up plays and, uh, and facilitate offense going the other way. So I mean, we have got all, all kinds of time for him and thought uh, thought reward him for, uh, for a strong strong performance and, and overall just a um, you know, great resume at this point. Alex Turgot scores a goal, but honestly I felt maybe not his even his best move in the game. He had took a puck off a guy's stick early in the second, I think, down uh, low in the offensive zone. Can you talk about his evolution uh, as a 200-foot player? Yeah, it's, it's interesting with him. I think he's... He might even be more appreciated when you watch the tape or from your vantage point up in the press box and even at ice level, even though he's he's so tenacious on the puck, I think that you really notice that when you rewatch or you're taking it in from, from the press box. You get to see his, how he'll hunt down. He, there's 25 feet between him and the player he's forechecking and he still somehow gets on top of that player and uh, and strips the puck or at least stalls it out. So, um, and then you know so many times we're through the neutral zone. He's he's seeing the play and that's that's the most important factor. I saw it a lot during training camp and uh, even his exhibitions. It's just like you, he, the play was there. He might not have made it, but he saw it. You know, and that's that's the first step is the guys that can actually see the play and then you know the more comfortable they get at the speed or you know at the level, uh, then you, then you start converting a couple more. But um, you know, very happy with his evolution. His confidence level, I think, is in a is an appropriate spot, and uh, it's good to see him get rewarded. I'd like to see him get even more rewarded. So, noticeable amount of truculence, for lack of a better word, in the first two games. Any link between that and uh, picking up three points in your first two games? I think uh, I think having the fans back in has added just a little bit of juice to the you know a little bit more. Uh, you know what, what you'd call excitement for the game, uh, adrenaline, if it if maybe is the right word, and I think that adds to the uh, the players' intensity level. Um, you know, and we're gonna we're gonna have to be be a team. I thought that even though even though it did it did show up analytically that we that we played a very strong game. Uh, I still I still felt like you know the game's always won in the trenches uh, along the walls and at the net fronts, and I felt like we were just we were I thought we were below average, especially compared to the pedigree which we showed last night against a you know a really good San Diego team I thought that we were we were somewhat deficient I thought that Abbotsford might have it was just a little bit more eager and determined in, in some of those spots so we'll uh, we'll address that but um, you know emotional win last night and if you would if you would have said I'm not disappointed if you would have said that we were going to you know come out of this with three points and play uh, play pretty pretty good hockey this weekend and have some things to build on I would have taken it and so we're we're not uh, we're not discon or, you know we're not discontent with the, with the weekend one game so far from Spence and now one from Granz. What do you like about your uh, rookie blue line? I, you know, I, I thought that, um, you know, Granz, I thought, struggled in the first, but then he sort of, you know, there was the, the, the pass uh, to Tynes, and that kind of that kind of gave him, I think, the confidence to maybe maybe go out there and just and just play a little bit. And then he, he's around a lot of really good things, and he started, you know, I alluded to the, the trench work, and uh, that was an area that he was pretty fairly deficient in, whether it was him getting caught, looking at uh, guys flying through the middle of the ice and get stuck on the wall and not breaking up the play uh, or just flat out not winning a wall battle but he showed in the second and third a, a, you know a, a pretty stout uh, uh, acumen and of, of picking those areas up and so hopefully that that's something he can build on and I, I know I'm really happy for the for him uh, and then yesterday with uh, with Spenny you know his game his game's loud yeah you know there's not a he's explosive uh, and confident um, He's got he's got snap to the puck. He's you know his defensive positioning is sound. We can still work with him on a couple things, and you know that was uh, we want to give give some guys some chances here with five games and eight days. We want to give a good, give a good audition to both of those guys, and so I thought that was a good opportunity for for Helgi to get in the lineup today. But uh, we're happy with both. Are we going to see you uh, sporting a mustache like Martin? <laughs> 
<laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Thanks very much. I think I'd look like the, the one guy from Super Trooper. <laughs> I was going to ask you, this might get repetitive. Yeah, sure. Um, but TJ Tynan, I, I thought he was all over the place. And you elected a, on the Turcock goal, he was playing with a different group, maybe to, maybe to juice them up a little bit. What, what can you say about his performance? Today? Yeah, you can't, you can't say enough. I mean, it's uh, the most valuable player in the league uh, for a reason. And it's, you know we've had a number of guys uh, in our in our front office say you know about him and it, it carries over from his practice. There's just nothing nothing he takes off. Uh, there's not a second that he takes off from his from his game. Um, consummate professional and it shows up every every single game. I've never seen him play uh, a game where he's not all over the uh, the scoring chances. Um, and it's it's it, it's inspiring to coach and hopefully we can get a couple more guys to sort of emulate how he how he takes you know goes about his business because we don't want to rely on tj we want him to be a part of the group we don't want him to be the guy that has to roll over the boards and that is our go-to guy we want him to be a part of the collection of of the solution that uh, for the ontario reign and to keep pushing for the national league for him so uh that's you know but he's so fun to watch and uh he opens up a lot of options for us